traditional cultures have thought of the sun as alive and conscious. I lived in India for seven years, and in India, Hindus, for example, take it for granted that the sun is a conscious being. It's not as if scientists have ever proved the sun or the other stars are unconscious. They've just assumed it, because Descartes said so in the 17th century, defined all matter as unconscious by definition, not by proof, empirical inquiry, rational discussion. A simple prejudice and taboo has become established on these questions where they're not valid topics for discussion, except perhaps at the weekend university. I think that the question, it's a, an open question, is the sun conscious? And then if we think about that a little bit more, well, the first we'd have to recognize straight away that if the sun's conscious, then all the other stars are probably conscious too. What's the interface between its mind and its body? Well, what's the interface between our brains and our minds, our bodies and our minds? Most people would think that that interface is to do with the electrical patterns of activity in the brain, that that's what it relates to our consciousness. You know, EEG, you alpha rhythms, theta waves, delta rhythms, and so on, depend on your state of consciousness. That the somehow the electrical activity of the brain is what underlies mental activity. This is what electrochemical activity, because of course there are neurotransmitters, but, um, but it's principally the electrical activity that people are interested in, and neurophysiologists measure, and neuroscientists measure this activity through all sorts of electrical devices, not just EEGs, electroencephalographs. Well, does the sun have electrical activity? Well, yes, it does. The sun has immensely complex patterns of electrical activity. It has its whole surface is covered with granulations, millions of them. Each side of the sun has at least a million of these granulations, which are like convection cells, which are made of electrically charged plasma. They set up electrical currents through their movements. Then you have annual, you have 11 year cycles of solar activity, the sunspot cycle, uh, where you get more and more sunspots, and each sunspot is dark because there's such intense magnetic fields coming out of it that they form huge loops with other sunspots and they sort of push everything else aside. And those magnetic fields interact and underlie the heat in the solar corona. The corona of the sun is about 5 million degrees centigrade. The photosphere, the bit you see when you look at the sun, is only about 5,000 degrees centigrade. So there's a lot of heat generated and it's thought to happen through the interaction of these magnetic magnetic fields. And this is completely unpredictable, the behavior of the sun. That's why NASA, the American Space Administration, issues weather forecasts, solar weather forecasts, because the activity of the sun is very variable. Even these 11-year cycles are rather variable. Every 11 years, around the middle of the sunspot cycle, the sun's magnetic polarity reverses, so its north magnetic pole becomes the south pole. So the entire polarity of the sun flips. But sometimes it doesn't flip that much, or these cycles are rather weak. Recently, we've had a very weak solar cycle. So the sun is full of immensely active, highly differentiated electrical activity and magnetic activity. And this is instantly integrated through the electrical and magnetic fields of the sun, which permeate the entire solar system. The solar wind comes out of the sun and reaches right to the end. The whole, the whole solar system has a kind of membrane around it called the heliopause, where the solar wind encounters the galactic wind of charged particles moving through the galaxy. And where they interact, it forms a kind of membrane around the solar system. We're all enclosed in a kind of bubble. And within that bubble, everything's dominated by the sun's electromagnetic field, its radiation, and the solar wind of charged particles that are coming out of the sun all the time. Sometimes there are more than others. There are coronal mass ejections when huge billions of tons of matter pushed out of the sun. There's also solar flares, which send out intense pulses of charged particles. If one of them hits the Earth, it takes out our power transmission systems. And if a really powerful one hit the world, Earth, it would cripple our whole civilization because our uh, ele national grid and other electrical transmission systems act as aerials for this and would, would absorb this energy and would blow out all the transformers take months to make enough new transformers to restore the national grid. So the sun can have enormous effects here on Earth. Its 11-year cycles affect the climate, the weather, um, and uh, it could, if it chose, take out civilization as we know it um, at any time.
So the sun uh, may have all sorts of possibilities in its mind if it's conscious. It's assumed to be totally random within regular science. You know, Hindus who do their daily prayer with the Gayatri Mantra think that the sun's being kind to us because they're asking it to be kind to us. You know, we may scorn what they're doing and say, oh, what ridiculous superstition, but it may be we're all benefiting from it without realizing it.